Okay, now I'm going to show you how to shade your scissors. So um, you're going to need each of your drawing pencils. Remember, we're starting with the ebony, the 4B, and the 2H, as well as our blender. And we're going to look at where our darkest areas are. So for me, um, I see the darkest areas here are the dimension areas and then the cast shadows. And then the lightest areas are definitely the blades of the scissors and especially where we're seeing some highlight and reflection off of the metal. To start with, I'm going to begin by giving my handles just a nice medium value. When I look at it, to me it looks like a three value. Remember we did our practice on our value scales and our sketchbooks. So refer to that value scale and see what areas in your photos look like which of the values from your value scale. So to me, I'm seeing a three or maybe a four there. So I'm gonna work with my uh, 4B pencil and I'm just gonna start by giving it a nice light overall value. And again, I'm avoiding the screw that's connecting the two handles. So now that I've shaded that in, I'm going to look closer and see which areas are a little bit darker. So here, we're seeing a little bit more of a shadow in this area that drops below. Generally, a good rule of thumb is anything that's further away from the light is going to be a little bit darker. So this area, because it goes down in the scissors a little bit, it's going to appear darker. So I can go ahead and show that area that dips down in the handle just a little bit darker. Then I'm seeing some of my fours and fives in the dimension. Um, so I'm gonna switch to my ebony. I'm gonna press hard, but I'm not gonna press my hardest um, because I want my cast shadows to be my absolute darkest. So I do wanna see a difference here for the sides of my handles, that they aren't um, quite as light as the top of the handles because remember, the top of the handles are facing the light, so they're going to appear lighter where these dimension areas fall into the shadow, so they're going to appear as a darker value. So I've got those in there. Um, so the next step, I can even come back in with my ebony and really show where that cast shadow is, and I left those lines very faint. I'm going to keep it darkest right next to my handle. There is a little bit of an opening here that I see um, a little bit of light coming through. But I can really use my ebony to show where my cast shadows are showing on the background. And then I also have some cast shadows inside of my scissors and I see just a little bit of that reflection line there. I'm going to leave a little bit of that white showing for the reflection, but then I'm going to really press hard to get that nice dark ebony. But as I work towards the middle, I lighten my pressure because my shadow does get a little bit lighter. And now that I've shaded all of that in, I can come back in with my blender and really blend things smooth. So remember, we don't want to see any lines in our values. We want them to be nice and smooth. Oops, and as I'm doing that, I realized I missed this part here. This is a little bit closer to the light, so I'm going to make this more of a three or a four, so a little bit lighter than this side here. I'm going to come back in with my blender now. Now in some of the edges, you can see where the light's kind of reflecting off of this really thin area, especially when I Put the actual scissors here and you can see a little bit of that reflection so I'm going to leave the very edge of the handle um, as my highlight so have a little bit of that white of the paper showing through to really capture that dimension that I'm seeing work and blend this in and here it's a little bit darker so I'm going to press a little bit harder Remember, as you're blending, use the really light side of your blender for the lightest the values, and then here. flip it over and use the dark and side of your blender for the darkest values. If you end up with too much value on your blender, clean it on the edge of your paper. There. Then remember, you can even use a little bit of just the blender to really soften that edge of that cast shadow as it dissipates or disappears into the light. 
And I'm going to apply these same techniques to the rest of my drawing. And one thing I forgot to do was the screw on top of or the handle here. So here I'm seeing a little bit more of a shadow. So I'm using my 2H because this is definitely my lightest area. So really keeping this area light. And then within the screw, we see more shadows. So I go ahead and use my ebony. And I can even use a little bit of ebony here on the back side. It's a little bit darker. Then again, I can bring my blender in. And if anything gets a little bit too dark, you can always come back in with your eraser and lighten the edges. So here, if it got a little too much, I could take my edge of my eraser and again, help give those highlight areas that really help the dimension pop out. So I'm going to go ahead and shade the rest of my scissors so you can see what that would look like. One thing I forget to show is to erase around the lightest areas so that way your pencil line doesn't act like an outline before you start shading. And for the blade, remember I said the blade is the light lighter, so I'm going to use my 2H here, maybe a little bit of 4B here. This is the closest part to my light, so it's definitely the lightest with the highlight. So I really want to make sure that I'm showing that. So again, very lightly touching my pencil to the paper. And then as I approach the handle, I do make it a little bit darker. And my dimension is just a little bit darker here. It's not much. I'm just going to make this line here just a little bit darker. And I'm going to come in with my blender. Whoops. And as you can see, sometimes the graphite on here really builds up, so make sure you're barely touching the blender to the paper to smooth out those values. Because we don't want to transfer too much graphite to it. And I do want this to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to press a little bit harder. And then I go along that dimension a little bit. And then where I went outside of the lines, I can take my eraser, clean up my edges. And like I said, I want that highlight to show right along the edge there. So I come back in with my corner of my eraser, just make that nice little highlight that's showing up there. Well, I'm going to go ahead and shade the other one in. Um, but good luck with your shading and your drawing. Thing to keep in mind when you do your blending you might have to go back over your details and add more value to them like I'm doing here on the edge where um, there's that glue on the end of the scissors so remember you might have to go back over your details so they don't get lost when you blend